What a great day for we to be back here to study God's word again. I want us to just say a word of prayer this morning before we go into God's word. Sweet Spirit of the Lord, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity for we to come to you and learn of you. We ask that you open the eyes of our understanding, that we will behold wondrous things out of this word that you've given to us, and that we will have all that it takes to run the race that you have set before us. You are the one that sets this race. You are the one that will run with us. You are the one that will finish with us, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So thank you, Spirit of the Lord. Grant us great understanding this morning and help us to know what you want us to know. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This morning, I want to talk about Paul, which was formerly called Saul and Barnabas, and the appointment into the ministry and I want to make some clear distinction here to teach our pastors, pastors all around the world how to put these things in place so your ministry do not suffer so you don't have to suffer ministerial breakdowns and God is going to help you I am sure God is ready to help you. So it doesn't look as every day you are on the field, every day you are walking, and there is no result coming out. The time came in our training in this ministry that it looks as though every day we are going out for evangelism. Every day we are out on the field with so much zeal burning inside of you. And you just want to make sure that all God's purpose for your life come to pass in one day. And it's not possible. Because it's precept by precept. God told me something in um, 2013, precisely, while I was still serving my youth cup a program in Nigeria where everyone that has fin- um, is out of the university has to spend one year serving the government, serving the country. It's called NYSC, National Youth Service Cup. So I had to also enroll in it. And towards that year of my service, the Lord told me something. I was praying in the NCCF, National Christian Corpus Fellowship, in the NCCF Lodge. And the Lord told me precisely, he said, son, I will unveil the plan, my plan for your life, precept by precept. I can't forget that day. I was praying out in the night, and God told me, said, I will unveil my plans for your life, precept by precept. And that's why I am not worried about uh, so many things, because I know that God's word cannot fail. And if Abraham saw a vision, And he followed the vision. And God made it come to pass for him. Then, I think I have seen more than a vision. I have not just dreamt, but I have heard. Prophets have spoken. People have prayed. The church have prayed. I will not know how many people have been praying for me all over the world. That God's will for my life will come to pass. So I am not surprised today that I am in the ministry. Hallelujah. The same will happen to you. If only you depend on God, God will use you. I want to read from Acts chapter 12, from verse 25 to Acts chapter 13, to verse 3. It said, And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry 
And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Whose surname was Mark. <laughs> and now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simon, Simeon was called Niger. Hallelujah. Was called Niger. Lucius of Syria, my name, who had been brought up by Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Spirit said, He said, Now, now, the Spirit said, He said, Now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed, they laid hand on them, and they sent them away. Now, I want to explain some few things in the scripture for us to know today. There were several prophets. There were several helpers. There were several apostles. And there were also pastors in this place. But in the place of fasting, God separated two. With two unique purposes. Barnabas, the son of reconciliation. Barnabas, the one who could afford to give all he had, his property to the church. The one who does not consider the gain of himself, but the gain of the church. He wasn't a poor person, according to scripture. Barnabas is one that may not be so outspoken, but has the heart for the Lord. And wants to serve in the ministry of help. And God says, separate me, Barnabas, first. And Saul second. Saul, a man that was taken by the Lord, who no man could have converted but the Lord, because of his zeal for what he does. And God wanted to use the zeal too, as much as God wanted to use Barnabas, who can give for the work. Now, the work in your hands and in your church will stagnate when one, you fail to understand that God did not send you there alone. As a Paul on the field, you need a Barnabas to help you. Barnabas may not be as outspoken as you are, but Barnabas is ready to give for the work. Barnabas is an investor. Barnabas is a property owner. Barnabas has a lot to offer to the ministry. But these days, pastors have made it look as though. We have made it look as though. The only fold ministry, the only rewardable ministry is the, 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 the five-fold ministry, which is the pastors, the prophets, the um, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in the church. But I want you to understand this morning that it's not only so. We also have the health ministry, the leadership ministry. We have a lot and a lot and a lot that God wants everyone to serve according to their various ability. That's why God gave everyone his or our own ability. For you, your ability may be going to the field. But you are not the head of the church, so you don't even have everything. It means you still need the hand. The eyes need the hands. The hands need the feet. The feet need the intestine. Ah, you need the nerves, man. We need everyone in this kingdom. 
That's why the Bible did not say only prophets or pastors or apostles or evangelists or teachers will go to heaven. It is for everyone that believes. For everyone that believes is saved. Salvation is not just for you. But for you to do ministry without struggle, you need everyone to be carried along. There are people you need at certain times. And there are other people you need at other times. Discover the time when you need each of those people. Discover the time when you need them so much. Now, if you read, John Mark had been one that went with them to Jerusalem. But John Mark was not separated for the work. The Holy Ghost through the prayer did not separate John Mark. And John Mark also happened to be one of the people that separated Paul and Barnabas in the Bible. Now I want to make this clear to everyone pastors. When God has appointed, when God has brought out, has separated, don't add. Don't add. Because one of these ministries that God has separated these things for may lack. When you try to add and you try to separate, something will suffer for we. And that is what Barnabas suffered at the end. We never heard of him after there was the separation between Saul and Barnabas. And I also want to talk to the Barnabas in this kingdom. As much as God needs your resources for the kingdom, follow God's order. Follow God's order. Everyone is God's children, but God does not use everyone for his work. He looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. The work that may take you shorter will take you longer. If you try to add certain things to the work that God has put in your hands. So, therefore, you need to distinguish between the Paul in your ministries and the Saul in the ministries. And the Barnabas, sorry, in the ministries. So both of them can move on. Two Pauls cannot be on the field at the same time. You know why? Because Paul wouldn't wait to listen to Barnabas speak. To another Paul speak. But Barnabas could be patient to allow Paul to do the preaching. To allow Paul to express his faith and to share his testimony of how he was converted, of how he had been saved by Christ. But if there are two Paul in one station, I tell you that another problem too will arise in that congregation. Give them platforms to act and allow them. And give them a Barnabas to follow them. Tells me and you the money is very important in this kingdom. That ideas are very important in this kingdom. Those are what Barnabas can do. Whereas Paul wants to obey every dotted line of what God has said, Barnabas knows the way to make it work. That's why God said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. Separate me now, Barnabas and Saul. I do hope that you get the understanding of what I want to share with you, of what I shared with you this morning. And you walk with it, and the Holy Ghost will help you, even in your ministry, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. 
as we continue every day, by the grace of God, before this year, year runs up, God would have opened you up and opened me up to, to greater revelations of his word. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that your life can never be small. That you can never be nothing less than what God has placed you to be. In this life, you shall make a mark. And in heaven, you shall make marks too. Because God shall have a well done for you, that good and faithful servant. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And in case you are Barnabas in your commission, in case you are a Barnabas in your church, do not hide at the back seat. Please get out to walk. Get out to walk. And the Lord will bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.